Okay, here we go. This is going to be a quick, hopefully quick, demonstration on how to do the the folded transfer of a pattern using graphite paper. Uh, not carbon paper, graphite. This small section I have here for ease of use. Uh, what we're going to do is use this to transfer the design over. The reason why you use graphite paper instead of carbon paper. Carbon paper has a wax element. Uh, you cannot erase it. You can try. It's going to smudge all over the place. Carbon paper does an easy transfer. You can erase it and uh, you know get your mirroring mirror effect as I'm going to point out it's a very small scale but uh, for a larger three foot six foot ten foot window you need to take the elements of one side and get it on the other side uh, what it's good for is uh, the carbon paper being you can erase it you can you know get into the the cross the fold part of the pattern and be able to you know manipulate and overlay you know like a knot effect or you know what Celtic designs uh, Victorian what have you uh, I'm, with no uh, further delay I'm gonna show you first of all let's, let's get a piece of paper with a fold in it, it doesn't have to be, be perfect for this demonstration, I'm gonna get one solid. And just say this is three foot by six foot, five foot, doesn't matter. Basically, what I'm doing, I'm creating a a line, relax it a little bit, and uh, something real simple. You can all recognize. You get comfortable here. Say, so, uh, you could all recognize the heart. You know, you start out, one of you drafting, just do a light draft. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And again, I'm in a very awkward position here. I'm going to do my best. But typically, this this be done on a flat surface. Uh, if, if you uh, want to define lines, you know, if you're a righty, you can come in. Trick is when you when you're drawing, when you're happy with a an area, you put a little more pressure. It'll preserve what you want to do. So you put a little. You can go on. This is the whole idea of sketching. Up here. And my lighting is bad. Let me flip the other light on. Alright. Yeah, that's alright. Come here. And just say you want your heart to have some sort of element. Say, uh, you know, a banding effect, something that criss crosses over the center. And you, you kind of come in here. Again, this is just demonstration purposes what this is going to do is going to come down like that uh, but again I'm just going to go ahead and kind of darken this in just so we have a definitive line so come here and I'm this is not my normal drawing station it's going to be a little difficult All right and then just say if you wanted to you know, put a ribbon of some sort. Man, like this. Get your ribbon going. Like this. Again, it's not. I don't really have a design in mind, but just gonna show you a couple of elements. Just gonna bring that up a little bit more of a three-dimensional effect 
Oh, this is looking like a mom tattoo, but you get it. This here, you want to cut this line off, so you want to come up. You just work it in somehow. Again, this is just sketching. You do finalize uh, that, finalize the uh, drafting. Once it's completed, you know, transferred. I'm gonna need a break here. I'm doing a little too much more than I should. It's like I'm drawing a pattern. Uh, in any way, uh, right now, so you gotta fine tune that a little bit. something like that. So you have a basic sketching. This could be a big Celtic knot or what have you. Uh, well, I want to show you how, you how you can do a flipping technique. So uh, if, if you want you can clean it up a little bit. Get in your eraser. Just kind of clean it up. Yeah, just get a better view of what's going on. So I'm going to be touched up and finalized. Alright, so clean that up. I'm gonna do a fold. Ooh, a skull down there. It must be the season. Okay, here uh, I have a regular number two. What is that? Ticonderoga, Roga, nothing special. I like using a mechanical pencil when I do my sketching. Very comfortable. Um, Anyway, let's go ahead and make sure it's nice. Start up at the top. And if you're righty, you want to kind of make righty curves. And this is just to demonstrate how graphite paper works. You're already working with that line. Let's work with this line. And come in here. Here, from here, and I'm gonna come in here. Typically, when I, I do a pattern, pattern, I hit it up with a gel pen. It really defines lines, makes it so I can scan it, and uh, most of the time, if I do a, a pattern like this kind of a concept thing. I would import it into the computer, give it a, a horizontal flip, get my parameters down, move it around, stretch it. But again, it would be scanned with a, a gel pen, which I can show how to do that too. This is uh, basically doing the carbon thing. Did I do that? Let me check. Yep, I did it. All right, so yeah, I got them all. all right. So here, you have your template. Like, just say you wanted to extend this area. You say, you know, I like this heart, but I want to go ahead and put a little a diamond thing in there. So the elements are all going to go into place through the early stages and when you finally figure out what you want to do you just you do it now like I said this is erasable it's graphite but what I'm doing is I, I say I want, I want that maybe I want to put a little down here we're gonna go straight line but say I wanted to do a star here or, or some type of a teardrop I'm not going to bother, but uh, you also come in here and you say this got a nice swoop to it. You want to edge it up a little bit for a nice swoop. Same thing here. Fix it up for your final draft. Um, but here, 
the reason why I wanted to show this. So here I extend it. A lot of times with Celtic designs, you'll have the the pattern, you know, going way over and then back over. You want to be able to now transfer that to the other side. You take your graphite over it. It. You see, you got it there. Get that out of the way. Here, you go ahead and tighten it up. And uh, yeah, you, you can call it a day, so that's that's you know, works for me. Uh, make it a pattern. See, mom, you know, like that. You know, whatever. You can put someone's name in here. You can paint it. Uh, if you're going to use this pattern, say for digitizing, now would be a good time to run over. You know, with the gel pen. I know I got all my my pattern. And this again, this is a very simple transfer thing. If it's heavy with a lot more knots and detail, uh, take your gel pen. You already have this line defined really well so you can really come in here you darken it up really well and the thing is when you're digitizing a pattern you know you want to get as neat as possible you want all your lines to you know be a good finalized line yeah as you can see I'm I'm, I'm doing when I'm drawing I go light and then I, I follow back and go a little heavier. So all the, all the little, you know, hairs coming out. It's not an issue when you import the pattern and, and digitize it. Reason being is the software removes a lot of that. And you, you end up with basically the, the darkest line you've created. And even in the software I use, to say something's a little distorted, I could move it out, move it in, and make the adjustments. So you, you just you go ahead and darken it in. And again, it it can be you can sit here and really work on it, or you just kind of go quick and do it later on the computer. You have to draw straight lines is sometimes hard to do. Let's see if you. Uh, Got vision or shaking issues. So you really don't have to be a hundred percent perfect. So again, it gets digitized. You want it to look nice, but it doesn't. Like I said, you don't have to be perfect. You have a this little tricky area with a cut. Yeah, I've done patterns before, so I know what to do, what, how to work. The, the design. I know I gotta get something here. Uh, you know, no mystery really. Here, I know I gotta go a little high here. So what I'm gonna do is err on that side of the pattern of the of the design. So what I'm gonna do instead of making this a complete pattern, yeah, you know, as, as one sheet here, which I can do. I can. I could continue. It's so much easier to scan this into the computer. Get your half and bloop, flip it in the computer. You know, anyways, I basically did this so I can get some kind of perspective layout by flipping. Hope that makes sense. Here, I know I got a line here. That that again will. This can be worked in with design software on the computer. Uh, here is this is my connecting area. I want to make sure that this is good to go here. And fill it in. The, I think the most important thing when doing patterns, you can't leave any spaces. You don't just start leaving spaces in your in your gel pen. Pilot G02. Can you see that? There you go. Pilot that G 207. Uh, if you leave spaces in your line, you're going to have an issue later on 
with the removing background if digitizing it so for, for digitizing patterns make sure everything connects you always better to have a little over a little under then then a little under like right here you want to make sure that that's connected it's the way computers think they say well that that space was an intended space which it's not we want to get each segment perfect digitized it, uh, this here had keeping ratio with that but being it's kind of in front it's okay to be a little wider so you can go straight across it it's on a very slight bow and again in the computer if you want to do a little bumping out effect bring this this ribbon out it can very easily be done with uh, software that does a it's actually a warp tool in uh, pixel meter that's the app I use for my digitizing bring it bring it in as a digital file I use uh, Mac pages it has an incredible uh, background removal tool it's in the sense of the word it's called uh, alpha alpha tool and it's for creating PNG which uh, that's a file format with transparent background uh, that's uh, good for a lot of things it, it, the uh, alpha tool allows you to do all this cleaning up so I'm gonna pause right there and bring us into screenshot so let's go ahead and pause back I got my well, quick time player that's my video software but here I have uh, pages opened up blank page and what I do is I option click uh, left mouse click right mouse click depending on what's primary uh, I'm going to add a sketch oh I'm sorry scan a document I scan a document it's going to say find my phone I got that uh, simply hit the scan, uh, scan document and it blow, it shows up right on your screen you can bring it out a little bit necessarily be doesn't have to be the the whole size and uh, from here we have a lot of stuff we don't need okay so there's two ways of getting rid of that you go to image you can edit the mask uh, which will bring things around you know down and around for you uh, or, you know I could just undo that I, I, I like simply doing the uh, the shift command 4 key which is a screen capture you want to get enough of this you know just you know, capture that that's all we really need let go capture it take that we're gonna you can either delete it or you're better off going to a new page so that that one's saved that's your original scan I go here we're gonna paste that and then here we can go ahead and bring it up a little bit more just to get a good look at it uh, no rhyme or reason uh, Actually, smaller would be better, so it fits on this page. And then uh, you, you take this. I'm going to do Shift Command Four again. Grab it right around in here. Yeah, you got to zero in. You got to always trim it. You make sure you're, you're coming down good. Let's see. You can let go and. Shift Command 4 because I want to get that center. Yeah, right about. I think the, my primary focus is the detail in this area. This is not so, so important because I, I could draw a line. So what I did is I, I copied that with a good clipping. 
Alright, so we could delete this. We're gonna paste that. And then paste it again. It's a command V. You arrange that by flipping it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, flip. A little rusty. I haven't done a pattern in a while. You know, bring it all together. Straighten things up. See, that's not good. Like that. Okay, let's try that again. Why are you not lining up? Uh, I see why. All right, so we're going to take. I'm going to erase this area. Uh, the scanning, maybe because it was folded, didn't come out 100%. So I'm just going to go ahead and import this, erase it in another program. But what I do, I have the, the scanned image here. I'm going to go ahead and copy the whole thing. Go to a new page. I paste it. And then uh, we'll immediately go to remove background just to you clean it up a little bit. Clicking it once will do an automatic remove background. That's good and bad. Sometimes it removes too much. You want to reset it and and you know physically do it, you know, will manually do it. You know, by clicking and dragging, the further you drag away, the more background gets removed. As you can see, it removed all of that. Uh, you can you, know, you could start removing more. I like to get it done so I know what size I'm dealing with. Uh, you got five by five. You want to make that seven wide. We're gonna hit that off. Make that six point five. All right, so we got seven by six and a half. Now we're going to reconstrain the proportion so that if you do move it, it's going to stay in those proportions. If it's a little off, just go back to 7. All right, get the idea? Okay. Now here, we can go on. We could, we could uh, remove more background to clean it up. And you do that by hitting remove background again. But this time, I want to tone it down. What that does, it allows me to see what I did. So we can uh, you drag as much to remove that area. And to test it, you want to put a, a border on it. Here, you know, two pixels is good. You can see I got a little roughness up here. So you want to drag that out. See it smooths that out a little bit. The roughness. And then you just keep, now you want to go ahead and you work your pattern. See, this is laying down a, a two-point border. So if you go too far, it's not going to see. It's not going to give you the border. So you want to just go far enough to grab the area without selecting areas around it. That's why I do that that exposure adjustment. And, and all of this, see that, see that little space right there? You don't want that. So you're going to go back. And just go ahead and... See what, what you can do is just work one half side, one half of it. Let's go get a little bit. Yeah, clean that up and then uh, or do the whole thing and what I like to do is if, if I have a lot of issues uh, bring it into my other software that does that erasing see I, you always have to watch what you just did see I left a little space here and undo that and there are a lot of times that I'm taking this actual uh, what I'm working on I print it and I go back over with the gel pen to really darken the lines but just for demonstration purposes you get it as much as you can uh, I'm gonna leave it at that for now
and hit done. So now I have uh, my digitized hand drawing. Uh, and you know, there's a few ugly spots, but that can go away. There's two ways of doing it. Another way is uh, is selecting this. Go to image, enhance it, and then go ahead and hit the uh, the sharpness tool, or you can hit the exposure tool. Uh, it brings out a little bit darker. You get the contrast. You get get it really dark. So what that does is it makes the blacks the blackest and the whites the least that makes any sense all right so we have this this now i want to go ahead and copy this just like that go to another page and just by the clipboard i was saying there's two ways of doing this we're just using a clipboard it's actually reformatting the pixels of this drawing so if you go back to remove background again it actually saw cleaning up a lot of that you see that just disappeared it just started really starts cleaning it up so you, you could do that you can go ahead and uh, change the exposure see what you got to do you can see how the lines are starting to really clean up uh, the other other thing you can do is import this into a a drawing program, which I'm going to do because I got to fix this. Uh, but you see how the the lines are, you know, kind of ugly. Now they're all smoothed out. All right, just keep going around. And again, the more you pull away, the tighter it gets. Uh, nice thing about uh, pages app that being you're in this this point here you can go into the style hit it with the border again you'll give yourself another tight borders uh, not tight larger border uh, different size pixels see I missed this one it'll still border it even in remove background mode so what I'm gonna do is let's get a final look over it see if I can improve anything and it looks good. I'm going to be done. Again, we're going to. I could copy just this and import it into my drawing program, but you're going to have an issue with uh, flatness on the edge because the computer's picking this as a square image. So, what you want to do is you want to extend past that. You want to go. You can grab the whole thing or just, you know kind of go extend it you know see so you you have a nice field around it you know you have a background you copy that a little doot doot that's copy I'm gonna go into my paint program and what I'm gonna do two things I'm gonna go ahead and fix this see a little line here I wonder what that came from all right so you have an erase tool simply let's make that bigger Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to get rid of it. You want to let go every time you you do a race because if you keep the, the mouse down, it's going to... If you make a mistake, you know, you can, you can always just undo it. See, I went it too far, so I undo that without undoing the whole thing. Yeah. So let's get... Come on now. And then also, sometimes it's good to zoom in a little bit and see what you're doing. I want to just, I know I'm being picky. Alright, do that. Go around here, you can remove stuff like this. Just clean it up. Alright, uh, but mostly what you're doing back in the paint program, besides erasing it, it's really nifty tool for digitizing this I kind of stumbled on it you can see that this little uh, we could do that half select thing again uh, I'm gonna go back to 100% command A which is a select all feature 
we go into here we're going to add an effect and just colors all right but there's no color but there's a feature in this it's called gamma which really brings up the darkness of the darkness I don't like to go too far but yeah Be dark apply effect now this is the this is the big one blur blur is actually um, it's going to take all the all the lines and make them shadowy as you see you can increase the, the intensity I kind of had it set where I was last time I mean, you don't have to go heavy with it just enough to you know, make it so you can see your lines and uh, everything looks smoother okay so everything's nice and smoothed out there are alpha tools in this program I just pr pretty much bring it in here to do quick repairs and uh, you know blur it up blur it up a little bit we have uh, I'm gonna un undo that because what I want to do is just you know, oops wrong, wrong color just gonna go ahead and just fix this so we don't have that issue with spacing a dot right there all right so you have all that a little issue right here right. So I'm gonna go select all I know what that line is it'll go away watch it'll go away apply effect we're gonna blur we're gonna write pretty much where we were before right about there is good say okay select all you copy Go back to the command C. So I copied this blurred down image. Now, like I said, there's an alpha tool in here too. You, you can. Uh, I don't use it because uh, Pages is really good. I mean, you can do the alpha here too. It's basically creating a, you know, transparency here. It, it works. You know, it does pretty much the same thing. As you can see, when it's blurred down, things smooth out a lot. So I'm going to just step away from this. I'm sure I can get this pattern to look beautiful in paint, uh, S, but I use pages. So again, we don't want to delete that. We want to get a, a new page and paste to that in case we got to step back and do something. So here we want to bring it up get a better view on it center it you got OCD like me that's important uh, we go to image and hit the exposure again you see where I did the erasing here because I erased on the alpha image uh, remove background this is when everything comes together you're gonna go ahead and remove background but what I want to do is again give it the border we're going to go down to one so here we remove the background move the background see I was really starting to tighten things up and see that now this almost this is how this is how I stumbled onto that stained glass look when I started making patterns and they, it's starting to look like stained glass. So we gotta get rid of that. Come on. Should should have popped it out of there. Um, I have to erase that. Oh well. It happens. You know, you, you working back and forth in software, things happen. No big deal. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of getting a really nice defined line. It's doing it over here too. Oh, it's a bad day for Gary. Let's see. What it is, I should have copied it as an image. Maybe I'll do that. Um, no, that's all right. Ah, hold on. Put a 
life of me won't know why that happened. Alright, let's just hit that. I'm going to go back. Sometimes you have issues. Let's see. I do that. You know what I did? I selected it as this. So what I really need to do, I know what I did. I made a mistake. I, I selected it as this pasted PNG. We don't want that. We want to go ahead and reselect it inside this box. So I said you want to give yourself a little space. So get up up high here and then uh, select it copy it. So this is going to be more like a screenshot. I shouldn't get any of those erased areas. When I come back into here I'm going to delete that. I'm going to paste that and again uh, go ahead and remove background. Whoops. I double click. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I should have done that before. Okay. I'm just it's still showing it, but it's not as extreme. So, you know, all that those areas that were giving me a little grief and no longer there. Sometimes your best friend could be a copy and paste tool. It just takes care of a lot of unnecessary things. You have it like that. Right here, I hit done. Or, you know, clean it up some more. A after I get <coughs> done with this stage, I'm going to bring it into my other program, Pixelmator, which should do a lot more fine tuning. Once you get in this point, it, basically your hand draft digitized. You know, we have to add a line here, so we're going to go into shape. It's you know. Put it at 90. This will be your. I gotta widen it up a little bit. Alright, and then you can either drag it to center or use your your direction keys on the bottom. Yeah, just like that. Um, also, get a little bit of. that so we're all digitized we can go ahead and copy this again copy it now we know we're not going to go back here we can delete that paste it so we have another one you could clean it up more with the background you know come in you know really really fine-tune things you know get them really sharp uh, yeah, there's a lot more steps in that but basically every time you copy and paste an image the computer kind of learns it a little bit more each time and you know kind of figures out for you I don't really need that little spot I know where you're going with that let me try to help you out I mean that's it's today's computer is a I don't know if it's AI or it's just kind of knows what you want to do. So we get it here. You can see that everything's very light. Uh, let me get rid of that. Image style. Okay, I'm going to give it a border. It's three. Go down to two. So pretty much this is going to be my pattern. You bring it down even to one. Some people want to use a, a cricket. Uh, this is a transparency image. You can uh, save this as a a PNG, um, or you know the the software they have for Cricut. You can import JPEG and easily do it yourself, and it'll allow you to adjust the widths of the the lines. And so it, you know you, you're using a pattern. Uh, I mean PNG is fine. I, mean, I, I could send them all as PNG included in, in the PDF, but uh, some people have asked for it. Um, 
maybe I should. <laughs> I was like, hey, you know what? You got to do something. So, anyhow, we're going to copy that and bring it into our Pixelmator. Come on, Pixelmator. There we go. Create a new from the clipboard. This is this is a very powerful software. It does a lot of things all the others can't do. Uh, it does some things other ones can't do, but it, for the most part, it gets you to a place where you can look at a pattern and say, well, somebody buys this pattern, they're not going to be happy with it because it got a little heaviness. So we have these tools, you know, warp tool. Uh, what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to use the pinch tool, being I pointed this out. I'm going to pinch that up a little bit. Undo that. And basically the pinch tool is going to pinch what's directly in the center of that circle. Alright, so you can you can pinch things. Come here, give you a pinch. Uh, basically you look it over, you say, ah, a little heaviness here. I mean, in, in my opinion, a little heaviness is never an issue for me when I do stained glass, but there's so many people out there that, you know, they, they're used to that glass eye technology and everything's perfect, uh, all the lines are very consistent. I, I live in a world where it's handmade. Handmade, you're going to have a little bit of a wide here, a little narrow there. I want to undo that because I dragged down that a little bit. So what I want to do is go back into this tool, go to the warp. Uh, we're going to bring down that brush size. We don't need it that big. What this does, it, you know, it actually fixes things. So I had a little bump there, a little bump there. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the white pixels, pushing it over. I'm kind of nudging it away. Yeah, it's, you can get picky. You can get a little bump there. Basically trying to clean it up. Uh, and like I said earlier during my drafting part of this, there, there is a way to like make this banner bigger. And I'll show you right now. If you, you know, you can increase your, your warp to, a, you know, very large, 99%. You want to proportion it to what you're kind of warping. So here, you, as you can see, I can, I can warp this. Why aren't you warping? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to warp. I want to bump. So you see how this is going to bump? So uh, also if you want you can you can go to warp you know, like this. Drag that down. So you know what? I want that a little bit wider. Now you don't, you don't have to worry about being consistent across you know left to right because what we're going to do is copy half of it and do that same thing with the flip. Uh, for, for a finalized version of this this design, so you know, like I said, if you want to say, you know, I want to give a little bit of, I want to bring that out. You could do that. I mean, in Pixelmator, the power of this tool is just—it's amazing. You, you say, well, you know, I got a little, you know, straight on that heart there, or is this so much? I mean, you could keep playing with it until. You, you're done. What I like to do is I, I get as far as I feel really comfortable with it and then uh, later on I see something I say well I gotta fix that. You just bring it in and fix it. You know you can give that a nice little curve that. So again being I didn't uh, mess with the whole pattern there's no need to because I'm gonna being I started here on this side, I'm going to stay here and go ahead and you can you can hit this so you can just go ahead and hit the shift command 4 which brings up your crosshairs to do a clipboard copy of what you're really happy with. In this case it's the one on the left. So you, you don't go here you're going to lose your line so you want to you want to go right down the middle of that line, right? Just like that. Copy it. Go back into pages. Now th this is pretty much garbage because we made all those 
those uh, changes. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to get rid of this one too. We don't need that. Actually, you don't need all of this. So you have the pasted half of a well trimmed up pattern in Pixelmator. Right? You're going to paste it again. Take that. Flip it. Drag it over. And you nudge it just to tighten up the middle a little bit. Uh, now you have both your, both your sides pasted in. You go ahead and you're gonna save. You're gonna select it all. There's there's a way you can you can group these two. You know, make it one. You just select, select, and group, and it becomes one. You can do it that way. Um, I mean, I I just copy and paste. And the reason why I do that again is because I know I'm going to have to come back in here and do my remove background just one last time. I'm going to reset that in case it grabbed too much. Really clean up that edge. Give it a style line. So that's going to give me my perfect edging on it. Make it one, two. You can make it, you know, six, five. I mean, two is a good size. You say done, and the reason why I remove background because now it's going to tell me my exact height width in my range tool, so I can size my pattern. So, being it's a, it's set in proportions, you can you know leave it in the center, which I always like to be in center. This one's saying it's seven and change by six. They say all right, well, I want. I want seven, and it decided to be 6.16. I'm gonna click that. Go 6.25. Stretch it up a little bit. This is all about that. I guess it's not bad to have OCD, but I can't make this seven by 6.19. I don't know why. If it's too tall. So, all right, well, maybe I gotta. It just looks a little too tall. Make it squatty. So, oh, I really like squatty. So, I'm gonna go 5.75. Sometimes, just by doing that, you get a better perspective of, of a pattern you drew, and you can make those changes. And here, no, looking at it now, say, well, oh, a little too squatty. I'm going to bring it back to where I intended. So I'm, I'm looking at 7.6.08. So I'm going to go 7 by 6. So you know, that's a nice proportionate. We're going to constrain. Leave it, make sure it's centered. And that's pretty much it. <coughs> now this, this pattern, uh, part of the pattern, I could take this, import it, being that it's all cleaned up, doubled up, and it's got all the parameters. I, I can copy it. Instead of again copying it in the, in the parameters, I'm going to grab it outside because it's going to give you that room to go ahead and do more manipulating. See here, you just want to close this out and delete it. I mean, I could have pasted a, another layer, but I'm done with that. It's, it's done. I'm going to go File New from Clipboard. So you have your spacing here. Uh, when when you're back in uh, Pixelmator, you're working with pixels. So here, I'm going to go ahead and just show you really quick. Whoop, I didn't want to do that. And again, you could Command Z that. I mean, I, I can do Option Click or Control Click. I think it removes it. Hold on. Yeah. Option click. If you click too many, so I didn't mean to do that. But option, option click it. And here, this little demonstration is just showing you the add effect of a fill. I think I did this before uh, using glass swatches. And uh, this is going to be a real long video, but I think it's really worth it. I have these are JPEGs of all kinds of glass that I, you can take screenshots of them, save them as a JPEG, put them in a, a folder 
cold glass swatches and what have you. Uh, here, let's just pick one rose. You can move it. Say, oh, I like that end of the glass. We well, can scale it, make it smaller, and then and so on, and so forth. You keep going on. You can add glass fills to your pattern. Um, to get rid of all this selection thing, you can do select all. Uh, we'll click outside it. Uh, it's Pixelmator. It's your right hand of your right hand. You're doing patterns and you want to clean them up. Re, you know, get things looking the way you want. You know, reshaping like I did this this banner here. You go to is Pixelmator. Uh, I'm sure Adobe has soft. You know, this one's 50 bucks. It's 49.95. Can't beat it. Uh, I've I've had Illustrator trials and Photo Deluxe and Photoshop and you know all of that. And they have powerful tools as far as alpha and edging. The only thing that Pixelmator does not have is if you're selecting a, a you know they, they call it a stroke the lines uh, Photoshop has an inside stroke border tool so basically if you select this and you can do it here uh, or do it here you select that and and just by moving you could you got deselect you can select that and then change the color but you know what I'm I got this all down, my gel pen, my drawing, we're done with it. I don't have to get it ready for uh, whatever, Meme Central. But it would look nice. Alright, so we're done with that. I'm, I'm not going to move any further than this. Uh, I'm going to delete that. I have the pattern. It's a simple heart. But again, I just wanted to show you the graphite paper, not carbon paper, graphite paper is erasable I just wanted to this is a small area but basically taking this line element extending it and then using the graphite to flip it erase it and create a complete pattern and then even if I'm looking at this I notice I got a little awkward lumpiness here it's so easy to fix you just go ahead and do your selection tool yeah, like I said, I could, I could look at a pattern, come back tomorrow, uh, a week, and uh, say, well, I, you know, I should have done that. So I got got back in here, go back into warp. You got a good brush size. So what I'm going to do is, you know, fix that. Give it, I'm not happy with how it, it worked with that. I think from moving this around before, I, I messed with it. Basically... You know, adjusting these areas or that line to make it look more continuous. You know, and then again, uh, well, being I'm going to copy and paste that, so what I'm going to do is to to correct all that. I can go ahead and well, just just fix up this area, and just be done with it. But what I'm, what I was going to say is select this side because I fixed this area paste it into uh, pages again and get it really right I'm just trying to do that now because I, I did go back and fix this so I'm going to go back into pages and delete that paste it paste it again flip it drag it back over and now a little fine tune in the center we can group it like I said but that's not going to give you the full size I'm going to go ahead and copy go here delete that paste it remove background it's going to give you my my true size We're done I got my size let me say seven seven by six slightly over six right, and then we constrain it 
bring it to the middle and be done with it and then you do your fancy lettering whatever you want to do you know put your this and that and uh, anyway we're all set I'm gonna sign off here and if you do like the video please subscribe and if you don't like it put the thumbs down you can do that if you like it put the thumbs up if you really like it subscribe it thumbs up and comment how much you like it and then share it on your Facebook page <laughs> okay uh, take care everybody have a good day